On one of the recent episodes of the Welding Tips and Tricks podcast, we talked about modular fixturing and this fixture plate, this aluminum fixture plate that Roy had several of made recently, and I got one of them. I ordered one of them from him because I, over the years, I've done so many little small jobs for machine shops where this would have come in handy. The ability to have a big flat machine surface, a heat sink, as well as hold down holes, half by 13 holes. So this is a one inch thick chunk of 6061 aluminum with indexed holes, a place to put new and used electrodes, and it, it looks cool and it works great. So for this video, I ordered uh, an aluminum tubing laser cut star. Thought that would be a really good example of how useful this thing can be because I'll fixture up the small pieces and then I'll tack everything together and use the fixture and hold down kit that I got here from Amazon to show how I would do something like that. This is just one way of doing things, but if you got a little short run of parts, it sure does save time and sure does help. This is a number eight Furic Pro Cup. I'm gonna be using this for the video. It really yep. helps with filming. And so I thought if I just get one tack on all of these that I'll be able to move them around and tweak them a little bit and uh, they'll fit when I tack them all together. You can definitely have an accumulation of tolerances happen if, you're not, if you've got things locked in uh, you'll have to wind up cutting tacks loose, so I'm just putting one single tack on each one of these for the time being. And then if I need to tweak them a little bit, I'll tweak them a little bit when I tack them all together. See that next one just slams right in there and holds itself pretty much while I get the single tack on it. I like to sort of, uh, you know, sneak up on tacks sometimes if I don't want to make them too terribly big. And if one side isn't puddling, I'll move the electrode over to that side and make sure both sides are puddling before I stick rod in there to join the two together. And that's really all there is to that. I put a little extra rod in there because aluminum is hot short and it, the tacks are super weak. If you don't add a little bit of extra rod, you'll wind up getting cracked tacks and uh, that's no good. So I'm just going to show this one more time and then we'll get on to the rest of the video. Making sure that both corners are puddling, moving the electrode back and forth. Sometimes you have to get off the, the amperage to, to make one of them puddle. And then jam some rod in and join them and push a little bit of extra rod in. That depends on what you're doing. I might have wanted to make that tack a little smaller for certain applications, but for this, it should be okay. So you don't always have to have everything completely locked down before you get the first tack on something. But I'm going to have most of this thing locked down, and I kind of ran out of clamps there. So now that I can see that there's no real gaps in it and everything's going to fit, I'll go ahead and get a few tacks on here, and then I'll just tack everything up. And once enough tacks are on it, the idea is just to weld as much of it as possible with it locked down in the fixture, and then it's probably not going to move a whole lot after that. Now for this video, I use pretty basic Dynasty 280 settings, so 140 amps, and I was pulsing the pedal a little bit. 120 on the AC frequency and 70% EN on the AC balance. Now if you're interested in getting into the independent amplitude settings, I shot a video a while back working with my friend Mike Zancanato, a bike builder and here's a quick preview of that video where he was able to sometimes use 1 16th electrodes where I would normally use a 332 by using the advanced amplitude settings. So here's a little quick snippet of that and Mike does like to pulse the, uh, the foot pedal. I'll talk a little bit more of that, why that might be a good idea for tubing like this. And uh, But this is a short snippet of that video. It was fun working with him, and, and uh, he was just a wealth of knowledge on things that he had learned on the uh, what he liked to do for the independent amplitude settings. That stuff gets kind of confusing sometimes. It's good to have somebody kind of make sense of it. I'll get into some also. I've got the independent amplitude card now for the Dynasty 280. So I'll be getting into some of those videos pretty soon. All right, here we go. I'm using a 332 electrode, 2% laminated. It's tapered with a number 8 Furic Pro Cup mainly for filming. It lights everything up and, and helps me see the way as well. And you can see here I'm kind of pulsing the foot pedal a little bit. And that kind of helps when you're going around tubing and trying to change the angle of your torch. I'm, I'm rotating the angle of my torch a little bit as I come up around that curve. And it gives me a second when I pulse the pedal to kind of, uh, you know, keep from overheating everything while I'm waiting on getting my filler rod positioned. Now through this area right here, there's not a lot of electrode angle changing. It's almost just like welding a, a piece of flat plate. But around that first bend and then going uh, around the corner here, you have to twist your wrist a little bit to maintain a, a, a decent electrode angle. And there I duff my electrode just a little bit. 
and that's part of welding aluminum. Let's take another look at that real quick here, sped up times two. You can see each, each, in between each dip, I'm rotating my wrist, rotating the torch until I get up to right here, and then it's pretty much the same. I don't have to worry about it too much. And so right through here, uh, sometimes I didn't pulse the puddle. I just got in a good rhythm and, and saved the pulsing of the puddle for areas where I was having to wait just a second to reposition the electrode before I get the rod again. Okay. Another cool thing is uh, some, a small fixture plate like this. It's easy to rotate the part around. I mean, I could have clamped this down to the table. But then I would have been crawling all over that thing and uncomfortable. And a small plate like this is just really easy to reposition. I'm not pulsing the pedal so much that I'm letting off to where it solidifies completely. It just just lets off enough to to give me a second to not overheat things. Because sometimes a rod, your filler rod, won't be ready to dip. You're 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 fumbling around with your TIG glove or something like that. So backing off that pedal just a little bit seems to be beneficial for this type of application. I'll come in and weld these these tight angles to sew those up after both sides are welded. They take more heat. That's, in fact, that's the reason that I'm traveling in this direction. It takes a lot less heat out there on that tip and a lot more heat in here in this crotch. So it works really well. It helps get, get things heated up really nicely before I get here. And that's something that you always want to kind of think about with aluminum. You kind of have to balance it out though. You can't always just go in the direction that you'd like the heat to go because of distortion issues. So normally if this were steel, I might even weld in the other direction to avoid distortion because it's going to always want to pull more in the direction of that crotch. So those were kind of fun, kind of challenging a little bit at first, but still kind of fun. These are uh, pretty much more challenging actually, and it's harder to make them look good because if you're, you really do have to change torch angle almost every dip in order to maintain a, a good angle. So again, I'm pulsing the pedal a little bit here once I get going, adding a little bit less filler when I get over that tack to try to make things even out, but I probably added a little bit too much. And again, I'm just letting off the foot pedal enough to give myself a little bit of time to add rod in there. And I'll have to come back and uh, I'll show you the welding down in this area a little bit later because my torch angle is a little bit out of scope there and the fixture's in the way. So once, once, the, once everything's welded up at those areas, I'll just weld those last when it's out of the fixture where I can access them. And by that time, it won't move. Everything will stay nice and flat. Now, I'm trying to keep the hot tip of that rod shielded with the shielding gas here, but sometimes I'm coming a little bit farther out of the cup than I thought I was. There's a lot of forgiveness on aluminum because that... that the thing solidifies so quickly and cools off so quickly, it's not molten for very long, as, as with stainless steel or nickel or something like that, where that hot tip of that rod can re really get an oxide film on it. Got a little bit more forgiveness with aluminum. You can still do it. You can still add scum and oxide to the puddle if you come out of that argon too much. I've got quite a long arc going right there. You can see I got a little oxide in the puddle, probably mostly from the long arc, though. Okay, that's one side done. I didn't really snug down on these clamps too tight. You know, they're a little bit tighter than finger tight, but the whole thing's warming up quite a bit. So I've got my TIG Finger XL out for holding hot parts like that without screwing up my gloves. And I'll just, at this point, just kind of put it in there finger tight because I don't want to lock it down and mash it against the welds and make it crooked. So it's not going to move a whole lot from here on out. There are a lot of different cups you could use on this uh, on this job a lot of people like to use a number five standard cup Whew, I flicked I flicked the electrode again there with the with the rod so I'll, after cleaning it up I'm going to extend the electrode a little bit and weld that tight angle right there that's a good thing about this this gas lens number eight cup though is I can extend the electrode quite a ways and still get good coverage and that is pretty much what's called for on these little tight angles like that you could use a really small cup but then you don't have much gas coverage and then a big cup allows you to extend the electrode out farther so you can sometimes get in a tighter space with a bigger cup. Sometimes I'll even wad up an, a piece of aluminum for like an air dam to prevent that venturi effect that you can get. Here's another shot of me twisting my wrist and trying to maintain a good angle there. Kind of sped up a little bit. 
I'm just thinking about all kinds of jobs I've done over the years for small machine shops where I could have set up a little short production run fixturing here on this using a plate like this. So it's a cool thing. I mean, Roy is just making some short production runs of this. He's got an agreement with a machine shop that he used to work with down in Florida. So this last order, they got up an order of 20 and I put my name in the hat that I wanted to buy one as well and I'm really glad that I did. Things are warming up now, so I'm using a TIG finger to prop with. I like having a prop in my pocket. There's lots of ways you can prop, obviously. You can get a big ball of tape, a block of wood, a whatever, a, a, an old glove. But I just find it very helpful to just have the TIG finger next to me or in my pocket. That is my product, and uh, that is what helps pay for these videos, but I really do believe in it. I use one all the time now. In just a second, I'm going to give you a glimpse of looking through this clear cup. And I find that to be really beneficial. Not only that the, does the cup help me film, but it helps light up the whole area. and helps me see where I'm going. I'm in my 60s now. So, you know, it, anything I can do to help, help see the puddle, help see where I'm going, helps a lot. But you can see me looking right through the cup right here. And that's really helpful really sometimes, welding down in corners and everything. Where you can see where to feed the rod. Like, as opposed to like a pink cup where you just kind of either have to extend the electrode or you just guess. I am super happy that I got one of these fixture plates. And if you're interested in, in learning more about them, you know, I think that really the only way you can do it is to send, send Crummy Welding a direct message on Instagram and tell him you're interested in, uh, you know, getting one the next round that he makes. He's got to get at least 20 of them in order for, to make it worth his while. That's the hold down kit I bought from Amazon. I'll put the link to that in the description uh, of the video there. And also you saw the TIG finger and also these number eight Furic cups. I think the, these are really one of the best clear cup values on the market and I've got them bundled for a little bit of a savings. If you got a 17 air cooled style, you'll need an adapter kit like that. But you can learn all about that at weldmonger.com. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.